Hey, what is up? My name is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. This is the first real video on this Notion CMS. I did an intro video kind of walking you through the steps, what we are going to plan out to do in this series. What we're going to do this time is just basically get the site up and running. So it will look something like this when we're done today. Now, we are not going to dynamically load anything, although the final finished product is here on my site. You can load it, and it will have the skeleton loading animation and then drop in this live data from Notion. What we're going to do today, though, is just get the HTML and CSS up and running with Vite.js. Now, Vite is like a next generation kind of bundler. It spins up a dev server, all this kind of stuff. We're going to keep it real, real simple. No config options or anything like that. And we're just going to use plain vanilla JavaScript as far as how we structure out the Vite project itself. Uh, I'll, I'll leave you to actually figuring out how to use all of this. I'm just going to walk you through, like I said, the most basic setup. I've navigated in VS Code here over on the left to a directory that I want to add this website into. Now I'll just paste in that command and hit return and it will install everything. I just need to say, uh, yes, that is fine. And you can see it actually goes fairly quickly. Now it asked me what project name I wanna give this. So I'm gonna call it uh, Notion uh, CMS. And then if I can zoom out here, let me pull this up so you can actually see what's going on. It's asking what kind of framework. We're just gonna keep it simple to vanilla. We're not even gonna add TypeScript. Now it's just telling us what to do. So I can say Notion uh, CMS like that. And then I need to do NPM install, or I could just do I, and it's pretty quick. And we're done. All right, so not long at all. And then finally, npm run dev. And that will spin up a dev server for me automatically at port 3003. Now I can go ahead and click this, and it should open up over here, and it says, hello, Vite. All right, so I've got a site already up and running. Now if I come over here and expand the sidebar, you can see all the stuff that Vite has already added for me. It has a git ignore file that's ready for me. It's got a little favicon here that is just their little Vite favicon. And then it's got this index.html file kind of already scaffolded out. And you can see here that it's loading a JavaScript file, which is right here. The JavaScript file is importing a, a style sheet, which is right here. And then eventually, if I were to run another command, which if I come in here to my package.json, I've got a dev script and a build script. I've also got a preview. And again, I'll leave you to figure out how all that works. But basically, we've done the dev one right now. And eventually, when you go to build your site, Netlify is going to use this build script, and it will build it out. That minifies it, renames a lot of your variables to keep them super short and compact. Uh, so that's what Vite is doing in the background. And we don't have to worry about any of that. We just have to write HTML and CSS. So let's go ahead and open up the HTML file. Let me close the sidebar here. And I'm going to just pull this down quite a bit so we can just see if something goes wrong, which it shouldn't since we're just mostly writing HTML. Um, but all right, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start by renaming this. Let's call it Notion CMS. And then I'll leave that. Uh, let's, let's get rid of this for now. We'll have to remove that in our JavaScript file in a second. If I save this, then nothing shows up um, because I have removed everything that was being loaded by that JavaScript file. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to have a main tag with a class of card container. Because we don't have too much going on, then all we need to do is add an article tag with a class of card. And then inside here, I'm going to have basically four different little sections. So for the one, I'm going to have an image here with the class of card uh, image. And let's see, when it comes to the source, I found this little doodle ipsum that I thought was fun. You grab these here and tell it how large you want it. So let's do something like, I don't know, let's do like 350 uh, for the width and I'll do 16 by nine. And it's just gonna select it there. And then you can just keep clicking these and it will just give you different pictures. All right, so I'll do that, copy this out. And I'm gonna add that as my source. And I'll say, uh, hand drawn uh, doodle, something like that. Okay, so I've got an image, that's the first thing. The next thing would be a heading, and this is just gonna have a class of uh, card uh, heading. And inside here, I'll just have like lorem ipsum dolor or whatever, the first three letters of that lorem ipsum. All right, next I'm gonna have a div here, um, and this div is gonna have a class of card content. And inside here, I'm going to have a paragraph with like 30 lorem ipsum, something like that. And then the fourth thing will be a button. This is going to be an A tag with a class of card uh, button. And for now, I'll have it go nowhere. And then I will have it say, uh, check this out like that. All right, if I come back over here, I'm getting all this pulling in, which is great. Now, rather than uh, watching me scaffold out other fake data, let's just copy this down. I'm holding Command and Shift and the down arrow. 
And now I've got a bunch of these all ready to go. Okay, cool. So we've got the HTML done. Let's go ahead and pull up. Let's get rid of, let's go here and get rid of this so it's not yelling at us in the dev tools. So you're not confused there. So all we're importing so far is our style sheet. We'll do the JavaScript in a later video. So if I come in here, we're gonna do a few things. Uh, number one, let's get rid of all of that. Uh, we're gonna use something called open props. This is something new that was put out. And uh, I think it's kind of a cool idea. It's basically taking CSS variables and giving you uh, basically variables to choose from that make your styling more consistent and just add some cool functionality. But because it's all CSS variables, you can use it with any framework. You can just use it in you know, vanilla CSS. Uh, and so I think this is kind of a cool way to work with it. You can see across the bottom here, they have different categories of things like different colors you can use or gradients or shadows or all these kinds of things. And of course you can define your own CSS variables. Uh, but because I like the idea, uh, we're just gonna use this rather than um, kind of doing a lot of the normal stuff we would do. So I'll walk you through kind of how to use it very, very briefly as we get going. If you're interested in this, uh, let me know and I can do a, a more extended video. I just started playing with it the other day and thought it might be kind of fun to throw in here. If I come here, you can see, let's see, overview. Getting started, here we go. All right, so there's a bunch of things we can do. We can clone it, we can install it with NPM. Uh, I think probably the easiest thing to do is just to install like stuff from a CDN and make it real simple on us. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna grab these two uh, link tags and let's just go ahead and add this to the HTML up top here. So I'll add it like this. I like to move my title so it loads right away. So we'll do that. And now we should be good to go here. And just to make sure, let's go ahead and say uh, body. I'm gonna say display of grid. And then uh, let's do place content center. And some of these things might be available as CSS, uh, as these open props. I just haven't looked at every single thing. So I'm just gonna use what I've seen. And uh, I think it's kind of fun. So we've got a background uh, image that's available to us. That's one of these gradients. So if I come down here and click, They've got all these predefined gradients and you can see samples that they give you. I think they're like 35 or something, uh, but I saw this 15 one. I thought that was kind of cool. And they'll show you how to use these. So for instance, you just say background image like that. So let's just paste this in and save it and see if it changed. Okay, so it did. So it loaded our style sheet. And then by the time we got around to this, now we can go ahead and start using these CSS variables in our CSS. Okay, cool. So let's do a couple other things. Let's grab the card container and I'm gonna add uh, display a flex and then align items start, flex wrap, wrap. So we're gonna wrap those cards down when they need to wrap. And then we'll do justify content center and then gap. And here's another one of these open props I wanna use. If I come over here, see shadows aspect ratio easing animation sizes. I think this is what I'm looking for. There's two kinds of sizes they give you. They give you relative sizes, so you, it's just always gonna be like one rem, for instance. Or you can use fluid sizes, which use the clamp property. And I like to use the clamp property when I can. It makes it dynamic as you change screen sizes. And it's mostly supported everywhere in the modern browsers. It's just gonna take a little bit for it to really populate across the entire web. But we can come in here and say size uh, fluid four something like that. And you can see what that's gonna do is give us a clamp of two rem at the smallest. It's gonna to try to be four view width and then three rem at the largest. So I can go ahead and close that out and then we'll say uh, margin var size fluid uh, four as well. So I'll have margin around it and then I'm gonna set a max width of 1500 uh, pixels. If I save that and come back over this way, you should see here that these should snap down. Oh, I have to actually add flex on the children, but um, they do have a gap between them. In fact, if I come and inspect this, uh, yeah, there you go. You can see that gap that shows up between them and then the margin on the outside as well and uh, all this space that the Flex container has created, this purple spacing. All right, so we've got the card container set. Let's go ahead and work on the card itself. And here we do need a Flex. We're gonna have it grow. Uh, let's, yeah, let's not have it grow at all so that the cards are always the same size. We're gonna try to keep them at 400 there. And then box uh, shadow var and let's come back over to our open props here we've got shadows and then there's a bunch of different options you can see here are the outer shadow shadows and the inner shadows so i like the outer shadow obviously for this so i'm going to come in here and we'll call this uh, shadow uh, five and then padding i'm going to use another one of those fluid sizes so i'll say size fluid uh, three 
So a little bit smaller than the margin on the outside of the, the parent container. We're gonna have our border uh, radius. And again, this is another one I can use. Let's see, borders, it's this here. And we've got some radius options. So four looks good to me. So yeah, let's use that. So I think it's just, yeah, radius four. So again, I come in here and say var radius four. And then we're gonna have a background color. And let's come to our color options here. And this is the background of the card itself. So I wanna have something that's themed kind of towards the color, but very, very light. So like this violet zero looks good. And you can see here, this is the props and this is how you would use them. So I'm gonna do something that looks very much uh, like this, except instead of blue zero, it's gonna say violet zero. So let's just copy that, and paste this in here, and then let's call this uh, violet zero. And finally, this itself will be a grid container. And uh, then I'll have a gap of var, in this case, I'm not gonna do a variable size. No matter the size, I just want it to be size two. And I did not spell this correctly. Let's go ahead and refresh that. You can see now these cards are already snapping into place as you'd expect. And I can pull up and eventually it should add another card when it can. Yeah, and if I go all the way down, it snaps down just to the that one size. And it's snapping down. You've got this nice little border, sh border. you've got a shadow. So a lot of cool stuff going on uh, just using these open props. Okay, we've just got a little bit left and then we're gonna be done for today's video. So do card heading. And here I just want the color to be our var of, I'm gonna have a pink four. And again, that's just a CSS prop that I'm grabbing. And then card uh, content here will be display of grid. And then a gap of our var size uh, two. All right, just a couple things left, or maybe, yeah, I think just two things left. I've got a card button. That's the button at the bottom of the page there. And the first thing I wanna do is change the background color. So we're gonna change this to a var of pink four, the same thing I did for the color of the heading. And if I do that, you see it shows there. Now, what I do wanna do is I don't want it to be full width. So there's two ways I could do that. I could do justify items start for the card itself, or I could come in here and say uh, width uh, max content. And then it will only ever be as wide as it can be just on that button. Now, let's see, the color of the text, I just want it to be white, so I'll just put white. Uh, we can just use the standard uh, CSS color there. For the padding of the button, I want my var size two, that's up and down, and then var size fluid uh, to right and left. And again, I'm just using the CSS props themselves. Uh, a border radius is gonna be the same as uh, we had up top, so radius four for the actual card. And then we're gonna have a margin top, so this is above the button here of our var size uh, fluid. And let's change it to fluid one. The box shadow, I'm gonna add our var shadow, not five, that's a little bit too big when I checked it out. So four like that, if I save it, you can see it populate over that way. Now I also wanna transition here just on the box shadow when I hover and we'll do 250 milliseconds. And this is another kind of cool option for these props. And you don't have to pull in all of these. That's what I did just to make it easy. You can actually just pull in the individual things you want. And the largest one of all of them is this animations. It's not massive, but if you're not gonna use it, it's probably worth leaving it out. So you're not uh, overcrowding your site with stuff. But you can see here, you can sample what these might look like. Uh, you can combine them. So like a shake, all kinds of cool stuff there. So anyhow, we're gonna uh, play with some of these. And what I'm gonna do is set this to var uh, ease squish three. All right, now if I come over here and look at squish, you see it under easing. So it wasn't animation, sorry about that. Um, but you can see how it's showing you different ease options here and ease squish. I thought that was kind of fun. So we're gonna do that. We could also do elastic. Okay, it's just a button. Let's move on, <laughs> all right? I come over here. You can see now, let's see. I have to actually add some kind of hover state. So we'll say card uh, button is hover or focus. First of all, I want text decoration to be none. And then also I want my box shadow to be none. All right, so now if I save this and come over here, you can see it has a little squish effect for that button itself, which is kind of cool. I could also, I guess, we could change it to all here and I could add, let's do a transform scale like 0.9, something like that. And maybe we can see it even squishier. Yeah, that's kind of cool. All right, let's leave it there.
Okay, so we've got the HTML and the CSS done. Now, what we're going to do in subsequent videos here is I'm going to show you how to set up Notion, how to then publish your site here to Netlify, and then eventually write a Netlify function and then pull that stuff on the front end when the client loads your web page. All right, I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Happy coding.